Jesus, you're like sunshine on my face. That's mm -hmm. like water to a thirsty soul. Them trucks say this life not some by some. But you carry me go front like I'm number one. Jesus, you're like sunshine on my face. That's like water to a thirsty soul. Them trucks say this life not some by some. But you carry me go front like I'm number one. Bowling in the spirit, flying with anointing. Swagger so divine. Pastor Tell Walistic. Front, Jesus got Good morning. Me. All the way from Niger. Yeah. Lori. How you doing? We love food. Jesus got me. Bat me, holy. Bold as a lion, gentle as a dove. Pastor Walistic, I despot you. Thank you very much. God bless you. Good morning, Bukola. Shakio. Yeah. God bless you. Thank you very much for joining. Uh <clears throat> Pastor Wally and me with this, so I day here, man. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you guys to go ahead and share the video on your page real quick. Uh share it, share it, share it, share it. Real quick. You know, let's get more people connected by the grace of God. Good morning, Olua Tony, Elizabeth. God bless you. Ruth, God bless you. Good morning. Now there is, there is so much confusion all over the world. So much confusion uh, when it comes to marriage and all that stuff. I was actually uh, talking with somebody this morning, uh, asking uh, a very, very important question. And I, I asked the guy, I said, why is marriage very, very important to the women? Marriage is so, so important to the women that all they think about is getting married, getting married, getting married. You know what I'm saying? All they think about is getting married, getting married, getting married. Now, when you ask people, come and register uh, for the Singles Connect, uh, come to conference, come to, you know, seminars about marriage, about relationship, how to get settled down and all that kind of stuff and everything, you will see 98% of the people you see there are all ladies. The men will show up. Okay. A, 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 you know, a woman can't marry another woman. They, they they are looking for a way to settle down to marry another, I mean, to marry a man. But the men are not available. It's so serious. You know what I'm saying? So when you, when you, when you, when you put a gathering together for singles, for them to mingle and to make friends and to be able to get somebody they can talk to and kind of like build friendship, Okay, you build friendship, build friendship until, you know, you have that relationship as you, you as you grow. But, but it, it's so funny that you will see a whole lot of women there, but you won't see the men. Okay, you see a lot of women, but you won't see the men. So, so much confusion. A lot of women are actually so tired right now, they just feel like, okay, I think, you know, I've tried. I, I don't I don't want to do it anymore. It's like I'm actually begging men to come and marry me or I'm begging them to become my friend or I'm begging them to be whatever. Well, may the Lord help us. I'm not sure what is the problem. I'm not sure why we men or our boys are not interested in actually settling down. I'm not sure what's making them to run away from getting married. I'm not sure. 
But but I want to just quickly just share a message this morning. Maybe this message is going to bless somebody that is listening out there. Okay, beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. When you look at somebody, you see the beauty. All right? But the person that is beautiful to you may not be beautiful to me. That's individual differences. That's what the different, uh, uh, you know, when, you know, different taste in people. Okay? Um, you you will just find out that somebody's going to be dying for a, a, a girl and I'm going to look at the girl and ask the person, like, what what what's wrong with you? Who are you dying for? This girl? This one is nothing. And the person may actually become angry that why is Pastor Shola saying this? Because the person may not look beautiful to me, to you, the person may look beautiful. You may be sexually attracted to somebody and the person may look so beautiful to you, so appealing to you, but to somebody else, it's not. Individual differences. That's why they say beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. The person that is looking will be the one to dictate maybe this person is beautiful or not. But love is in the heart. Love is of the heart. Okay? A beautiful lady may be so beautiful, may be so on point, but I may not fall in love with her. A man can be very handsome, tall, and whatever, good job, but I may not fall in love with him. That is why the love is of the heart. Beauty is of the eyes. People that look, when they are looking at you, they say you are beautiful. But you may be beautiful, but you may not be someone they can fall in love with. So, it has nothing to do with you being beautiful. It has nothing to do with you being having a good job. Uh, uh, Lucia, Romero, God bless you. Good morning. It has nothing to do with you being beautiful. It has nothing to do with you having a good job. It's just that the love of... Your love is not just in the heart of that person. It's not just there. Now, it's possible for you to get married today and tomorrow your eyes is now seeing someone else that looks more appealing to you. You know what I'm saying? That is what they call the lost of eyes. The lost of eyes. The lost of eyes. Alright? Now, every time, constantly, you will always find, your eyes will always see something more beautiful to you than the one that you are with. You will buy a car and then the next day your eyes will see another car that is more beautiful than your present car. And then you may actually buy a shirt and the next day you will see another shirt that you actually love more than the one you bought yesterday. You may buy a house and few days time you may find another house that is more beautiful and appealing than the one that you bought. So constantly, constantly, the human mind, I mean, the human eyes, we always perceive something more beautiful than what they have presently. What is that telling you? Is it the window of the, of the mind is the eyes. The mind cannot perceive until the eyes interprets. What you see is what you're going to interpret to your mind. All right? So, many people enter into a relationship and they, 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 they end up saying, will you marry me? And then they got married. And for them to start cheating, and then when you ask them what is going on, they will tell you, I'm not in love with the woman I'm cheating with. She is just beautiful. Appealing. All I want to do is just to take my eyes off. To be able to take the one in my eyes to take it off. So they want to remain with their wives. They want to be with their wife, but their eyes is still seeing. Their eyes is seeing. Their eyes is still looking. And the eyes will always spot something more beautiful at every point. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm a pastor, right? You believe I'm a pastor? All right. If you believe I'm a pastor, I am supposed to teach you and tell you the truth. Listen. Even myself, myself i have said it before on social media i'm gonna say it again today i got 
married in Nigeria. I love my wife. Everything was fine. Everything was on point. I packed my load. I jumped on the plane. Bam! From Nigeria all the way to Amsterdam. Amsterdam all the way to America. Boom! The moment I landed at the airport in America, I came out of the car, of, of the train, I mean, of, of the plane. And the very first thing I saw, I saw beautiful angels. Kai! I saw women, well packaged, well put together. Briefcases, high heel shoes, my God! Nice makeup, perfume on point, everything on point. Me, Pastor Shola, left Nigeria as a pastor. I didn't become a pastor here. Left Nigeria as a pastor. Jump on the plane, landed in America. The very first thing I saw, women. You know what funny thing that I started doing? I started blaming myself. I said, why are you married? So now why did you get married? Then I didn't blame myself alone. I started blaming God. Say, God, when you knew you are going to bring me to this country, why did you allow me to be married in Nigeria? Why did you allow me to be married? Now you are going to make me to suffer here. And now you call me to be a pastor. I'm a pastor. I can't do toss toss. I can't do side side. I can't do nothing. Now you brought me to this country. Now I'm seeing all these well packaged women, breast pointing like this, doing ka 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 ka. Everything doing bing 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 bing. I'm telling you, and they smile at you like, ah, oh, and you will melt. Oh, you are no reality, oh, le bambe. Oh, so you are fili fili ni walo sube ni. I'm telling you. So what happened? It's something that is natural that everyone will always see something that is more better than what you have presently. Something that's better. And it's going to be your eyes that we see. That's why they said, that's why they say, beauty lies in the eyes, not in the heart. It's the love that lies in the heart. You will see men Men that are so much in love, they fall in love with a woman that looks like a monkey. To you, to them, that monkey looks like the most beautiful thing in the whole wide world. You will not believe yourself when they tell you that this is my wife, someone I love so much. And you will begin to see the love in demonstration. You begin to wonder, how come this woman don't look beautiful to me? Uh, you are not the one that is in the relationship. This woman don't look as tall as I want her to be. This woman is not as educated as I want it. This woman is not fashionable the way I want it. This woman doesn't have all this. But listen, the person in that particular relationship already passed the period of looking. The man was able to go further into creating a space for the woman in his heart. Kai, you don't understand. When you are still looking, there is tendency for you to continue to look. You will continue to become luku, 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 and the eyes can never be satisfied. Oh my God. Somebody's not listening here. The eyes can never be satisfied. You will continue to look. You will see one today, you will see another one tomorrow, you will see one next week, and I love God so much. God is a God of variety. He created different kinds of women, the tall, the slim, the round, the whatever, that at every point in your life, you will always, <coughs> always see a woman that will catch your attention. You will see a woman that will catch your attention. You will be look. Oh, you have a yobol. You oh 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 oh
and it's going to go back to hell eventually. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, that is the way the eyes always want to see. See, 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 see. A dead body that has a phone in his pocket. How can they raise you from the dead? You are in the mud for three days. They didn't put you in the ice. And they left your cell phone in your pocket. As if to say you want to be calling him. Okay? When you woke up, you were looking like this. Like somebody that just came back from hell. You have seen fire burning people. Fire was burning people. So you look and say, ah! You know somebody coming for her. Oh my Lord, ah! Is there no tool lion? And the tool lion, ah! He know it. He know it. Would you want to come back home? Oh, he know. I tell you, he be look bad alone. He's going, he's going back there. I'm just trying to finally leave you. You know what I'm saying? So, and he has a phone in his pocket, and they woke him up, and the man start eating. He start eating fish, long fish like this, not the small fish, oh, long fish. He was eating long fish. He was eating long. He was. He was. He was. He was. Oku were oku buru kuto oru apadi lolo. You know what I'm saying? So that's the stuff. The eyes will always want to look and look and look and look. All right, and the eyes can never be satisfied until you actually go further from just looking into loving. The moment your heart is taken. And you are faithful with the one that you have picked. Your eyes will never see another thing again. Your eyes will never see another thing again. The moment you transfer what you have seen into your heart and your heart start loving the person, the Bible made me to understand that love covered all sins. It covered multitude of sins. That nothing can ever go wrong with that person. You will see the person, you will still continue to believe until you die that this person is the most beautiful in the whole wide world. It's about you going from just seeing into loving. Into loving. Many of us will dwell in just seeing the lust of eyes. And we are still there. The woman is only in your house because she still looks beautiful now. The man is still in your house because he's still handsome now. The woman is still with you because she's still making money now. The woman, the man is still with you because he's still rich now. The moment anything changes, the love will go down the drain. I mean, the whole relationship will go down the drain and your eyes will begin to hunt. You begin to look for something else. The eyes can never be satisfied. You will see good today, another good tomorrow, another good tomorrow, and you will continue to see and see and see. There is no limit to what you can see. In as much as you have the eyes, you will continue to see. And what you will see every day will be better than what you have seen yesterday. Because the human nature can never be satisfied. You will continue to look for something more better. People live in New York. They say, oh, New York is not good. I'm going to Houston. They move to Houston. They go to Houston. They say, oh, Houston is a bad place. So they move to Dallas. They keep moving, 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 moving everywhere. And yet, they are not satisfied. Some people move from Nigeria. Ah, I'm moving from Nigeria. I'm moving to Ghana. They go to Ghana. They are not satisfied. They move to South Africa. It's not good. Now they find themselves in America, no paper, no nothing. They say, oh, this place is not good. Let's go to Canada. They're going to Canada. Every time you keep moving and keep searching and keep looking for something that will satisfy your eyes and your flesh. The lust of eyes. The lust of flesh. Everything is not of God. It is not of God. Now, when you behold somebody... And you fall in love with that person, the gate will be closed. You see, people do say, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love. We don't understand what love is. No wonder people say there is no more love. There is no more love. 
He said, love, 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 love. Say, where is love? Say, forget it. Don't, don't talk about love. But who is loving who? Is there anybody in love with anybody now? Everything we see is all about condition. They call it conditional love. There is conditional love. Oh, if you want to marry me, this is what you have to have. If you want to be with me, this is what you have to give up. This is if you want to marry me, you have to be a registered nurse. If you want to marry me, you must have your paper already. If you want to marry me, you must be wealthy. You must already have a house. You must have a car you are driving and a constant flow of money. If you don't have it, forget about me. So everything is conditional love. It's not like, okay, oh, I'm seeing this guy. It doesn't matter maybe he's got a job or not. I'm seeing this woman. I don't matter. It doesn't matter maybe she's a nurse or not. But I'm in love with her and I want to marry her. And then we're going to build ourselves all the way up. <laughs> we build ourselves all the way up. Those days are gone. The days of people starting from the scratch together. And why? Because people are full of lies. People are full of lies. <laughs> oh God. People are full of lies. You will never know. This person will say I'm educated and they didn't go to school at all. This person will say I'm a PhD or that never went to school one time. He's a mechanic. Oh, this person is a mechanic or clinical. You never know. And people now believe that, listen, Instead of me just entering into a bad relationship, I will just use my brain to calculate it. Okay? And, and that's what it is. There's no more love these days. Everybody is looking for someone to use. Everybody. We're looking for someone to use. I, I'm not kidding you. Including pastors. Do you know how many pastors are used people to come to America? And then they say they are not married in Nigeria. And then they enter into America. And then before you get to know it, they will just dabaru the marriage and go and then be start preaching and doing all kinds of stuff. Pastors. Now we're supposed to say, ah, these ones are closer to God. They are not close to God. Which God are they close to? They are close, they are closer to the devil than to God. Than to God. Because of all this love, 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 love things. Do you know how many people have lost their lives? Because of this love, 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 love things. things that's what, do you know how many people are in the psychiatric hospital right now? Because of this love, 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 love things. Do you know how many women that their family don't talk to them anymore? They have been abandoned by their families. I know of one particular family that told their daughter, if you don't divorce that man, we will never talk to you again. And the woman said, I cannot divorce him. Okay? And the family said, so forget about us. Forget about us. Alright? What is actually happening in that relationship? The man is abusive. Every time the woman will call the father, he said, Oh, yeah, yeah, no, me don't know. He just finished beating me. Oh. He slapped me today. Oh. I'm admitted in the hospital. They said, Go and divorce the man. He said, No, I'm not divorcing the man, sir. I'm not divorcing the man. Oh. And we stay there. And the family said, Then forget about us. If you die, let them bury you there. Let them bury you there. No wonder, no, no, not knowing that the man threatened her. If you abandon me or you leave me, if I find you, I will kill you. I will kill your children and I will kill you. The woman eventually opened up to me. And I began to look at it. Family has abandoned the woman. Do you know how many families have abandoned people like that? All because of this love, 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 love thing. That we all have turned to be liars. Make believe everything. Do you know how many brothers have taken another man's car to go and oppress a sister? And then they, they, they oppress the sister, they impress the sister, they carry the sister, they, 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 they finish sleeping with the sister and then they dump her on the roadside. Do you know how many homes you have gone to thinking it's your, it's your boyfriend's house, that the house doesn't belong to him, that the house belongs to somebody else? Do you know how many times that you have actually gone on dinner, I mean to dinner, that the guy actually borrowed money to take you to dinner? But he wants to impress you. <coughs> to make you feel like, okay, yeah, because you want not I you by you. I tell you, only, or fun, yeah. Oh, no, you go call only, only not you see. All you are looking for is everything that is shining. And the devil knows how to do that. 
So they go and pretend to, to, to capture you. Who wants to catch a monkey must be like a monkey. So they know you to be talent only. They just be lodged your love rice. Let's carry her to go and eat. That's all she know. And then you'll be taking selfie. Me and my boo at the restaurant. Me and my boo at the restaurant. What in Lueta or money? What in Palem? They, they, they pack you, they put you in Lalon bag. It's a Lalon bag. Mobe Dani, Mobe Juzonu. It's a Lalon bag. Jumaka is a Lalon bag. It's a Lalon bag. Funka is a Lalon bag. It's a Lalon bag. Mobe Dani, Mobe Juzonu. It's a Lalon bag. Funka is a Lalon bag. Is a, they do it to me too. They say, Doku is a lie long back. Is a lie long back. Mugbe Dani Mugbe Jusonu. Is a lie long back. Lie long back. They are using you as a lie long back. Mugbe Dani Mugbe Jusonu. You know what I'm saying? Ele bin ye. Ele bin. They use food to capture you. You are the one they carry to the pepper soup joint. You are the one they carry. And you think they love you with love. How do you kill your beauty? I love your smell. I love your this. All that word. If all this stuff, if it enters your head, that's the final. Alright? You will wake up one day, your eyes go clear. <laughs> that's when you will see. When the brother will tell you, say, listen, ah, my game, don't let me see you in my house again. It will be like that dream. It is not God turning around the captivity. Oh. When the devil will capture a woman, it will be like they that dream. I am telling you the fact. If you don't go and wake up and know exactly what to do, I tell you what it will turn down, down. So there's nothing like you see when you see all of this stuff, you see all this make believe thing, you your, your eyes go begin and they do it a lot on social media, and then you don't understand. <coughs> you don't I said it before. You see a whole lot of brothers at the gym. They are there pushing weight. Pushing weight. Pushing weight. <laughs> then you look at them and say, ah, are, they do, are they getting money from this thing? Are they getting money from this weightlifting that they are doing? And you see them, they will be doing sakara. Have you gone to the gym before? Ah, I caught it. Caught you. Whenever they pull weight like this, then they, they, go, they go to the mirror, they go, they do like this. You know that? Are you getting money from this thing? Whenever I'm sitting down, they intimidate me. I will sit down there, me, I'll be doing my own suke suke like this and stuff like that. What will just come and do like this? I'm thinking of it. I'm telling you, you don't understand. The market is online. The market is online. Why are you, old lady? You are looking for six pack men. Six pack. Is this my girl? And then they, they don't wear shit anymore. They don't want you to shit anymore. If they are in church, oh, oh, one church, they will fitted shirt, no matter what. They will go and buy fitted shirt, they wear it, and all kinds of stuff, and everything. And, and, and for you to just see the six pack and that's so well, you'll be melting. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Oh, my God, I'm blushing. Blushing because of what? Are you the, are you the Chris? Your eyes go clear one day. They will collect your money. They will live in your apartment for six months, seven months, and no parent. They will chop your food. They will have sex with you, and then they will run away. They call them Fawaraja. Men are into it now. They build their chest, build everything. And their, and their, and their banana is very small like this. <laughs> and the banana you will get is very small. It's small. Very small banana like this. It's just bending towards the side a little bit. <laughs> I tell you, oh, tiny, yeah. that's where you will carry your hand and say, Oh, we want to be with you. Ah. Body, Lori Kosenji. Body, body, Nicolori Kosenji. You are seeing the body, there is no engine there. The six pack, no money. Your, your life is killing me. You don't know anything. He said, these are the things that we are actually doing. We, we just see our eyes is always looking. Always looking, looking for the best. Our eyes always looking. And you know what funny thing about men is that what we see moves us. It's what we see. Women, you see and then you listen. You see, for a man, when you're telling me, you look handsome. I say, I know before. 
I they see myself in the mirror that Pastor Shola is handsome. You don't have to tell me. I don't need a woolly to tell me I'm handsome. I look at my goatee. I, I, I say, I look at it. I, 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 I say, ah, thank God. Thank God for, thank God for this handsome bobo. <laughs> it is not you that will come and tell me. You think when you tell me, you will spark my head? Like, like. Only me, only who? Only me, only who? I am very handsome. I know that one before, before. Ah, Pastor you're good. Oh, look at your mozu. I know get mozu. Oh, yeah. Leave my mozu alone. The mozu is for me. Oh, yeah. It's not for you. You don't come here and be telling me things just to make my head spark. But for a woman, it's different. A woman, the moment you tell the woman, I like your outfit, you say, Are you sure? Really? Really? Yeah, really, man. I'm sure. I'm very sure. I like your sugoto. This is your sugoto. It's very nice. Though. Where did you get it? Yeah. It makes sense. Ah! It must be the expensive side, don't say. Of course. Oh my God. Ha! I'm blushing. Well, eh? <laughs> what the idea? <laughs> they are winding your head. One finger out here. They are fingering your brain. And your brain is responding. Any hey, happen? They say, then, they, then they come and say, oh, I love the way you look. Say, so, oh, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. You look you look very, very, very fine. You look are you, are you related to the Obama's family? <laughs> Are you related to Obama? You say, oh, actually, I'm from uh, Nigeria, but Nigeria and Kenya, they're just side by side. Oh, that's why. You must be related to Obama. Because this side of your face look like Obama's face. This side of your face look like Buhari's face. What is it? There is nothing like that. <coughs> For people... For people who are serious, you don't want to end up in a pit, in a pit or a ditch, whatever. You want to get the best of God. Listen to me. It's not an easy thing. It's not easy. All right? You yourself, you have to be prepared. What do I mean by preparation? It means that you must become what you're looking for. You cannot get a good man if you're not good yourself. The very first thing you have to know is this. The people you are attracting is based on the kind of person you are. Oh, no, the people you are attracting is because of the person you are. If you are a liar, you are a cheat, you will always attract someone exactly like yourself. Both of the same feather flock together. You cannot be a terrible person and be looking for somebody that is good. It won't happen. It takes, a, it takes hard work. Hard work. Big time hard work. That you have to first of all work on yourself. I remember so many years ago. I spoke to somebody and the person said, what do you want to become in life? I said, this is, this, this. you have to first of all become that thing before you can affect the life of others. I said, really? He said, yeah. You have to make sure that you understand what you want to become in the future and the way you want to influence people. So you yourself must actually use yourself as an experiment and become an example other people can follow. You become that. So it's not, it's not about, it's not praying. Oh, people don't understand. It's not praying. It's about you yourself must be that person. If your life is in line with God, you will find a godly man. I'm, I'm telling you. You don't pray, you don't pray like an ignorant person. Your life, your life is not preaching Jesus and you're asking Jesus to give you a godly husband. It, it can never happen. I, I, and you and you do not understand one fact that a lot of men these days they are no longer connected to God. A lot of men these days they are not connected to God. They have no God in them. No God at all. No God in them. None. You're supposed to see it. How many of our men are actually willing to do the things of God these days? None. Very few. 
Very few. Then how many of our women that go to church are real? Very few. They go to church ignorantly. They go to church and be praying, die, 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 without sense. They are terrible people. But they go to holy places. They are terrible human beings. But they shout and make us to believe they are very spiritual. They are not spiritual at all. They are fake. They come to places where we can see them and they now act holy. When they go back to where we are not able to see them again, they become themselves. They think they are fooling us, but they are fooling themselves. Who is wasting time? You. It is not me. You are not wasting my time. Me, I'm there doing my own. You are there trying to impress me. You are the one wasting time because God is not answering your prayer. And you are not being fulfilled. So who is fooling who? And who is wasting who, whose time? You are wasting your time. You are fooling yourself. <laughs> you think you are fooling God? You are not fooling God. He's, you know, he's not being fooled. You are fooling yourself. It, it's better for you to be an unbeliever. I always tell people that. As, I, I, I was listening to... I was listening to... Uh, Pastor Guliakon. One of his... That was, that was probably like about 25 years ago. 25 years ago. He preached one message. And he said... He was in a conference. We were all there in the conference. They are all pastors. Me... Uh, I, at that point, I wasn't a pastor that time, but I followed my pastor to the place. So, when we entered the place, the man started preaching. Oh, everybody inside that conference, they're all pastors. Pastors and pastors' wives. And then when he, when he started, he said, if you know you are not going to be in faith in another 30 years, I don't want to waste my time. Walk out of here. I don't want to preach to somebody that will backslide, that will eventually backslide. Some people stood up and they walk out. Then after the man finished ministration, he said, there are people that are sleeping with girls here. That is not your wife. They are sleeping with other people's wives. In this place, come out now. I saw pastor came out. Pastors were coming out. I said, on our way going home, my pastor said to me, I said, yes, sir. He said, what you see or what you saw, you don't talk. Who? I said, ah, I don't go talk, sir. But I'm only surprised. That when I saw those pastors, I was like, eh? He said, yeah, the pastors are human beings. They do things that other human beings do. That stuff messed me up. I'm telling you, messed me up like big time. That's why I really don't want to. You see, people don't understand that the closer you are to your pastor, the, the more bitterness you will carry. You don't understand. If you become very close to your, with your pastor, you won't appreciate him again. And then you will carry bitterness in you. You will carry bitterness in you. They are human beings. Oh, and they live their life like regular human beings. But we are the one that place them upon a platform that is higher than just being ordinary human being. We are expecting them not to fail. But they do fail. They fall. Many times. Several times. The Bible referred to them as righteous men. But when they fall several times, seven times, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord will come back and restore them. That's my prayer for everyone. But that's not where I'm going. That's not where I'm going. The issue now is that the highs is looking and looking and looking. What is your high saying? What is your high saying? What exactly you are saying? Now, as a married man who is deeply in love, it's just very scarce these days for us to find a man that is in love with a woman or a woman that is in love with a man. It's so very scarce. But there are still people that are so much in love, they don't see again. The only person they are looking at is the woman that they have given their heart to. You see, the moment somebody managed to enter into your heart that is the final place for that person that's the final place for that person if you go and study love very well love it forgives all things you know we are talking about oh somebody's cheating oh somebody's not faithful oh he's a liar oh she's a liar oh she's this oh she's that 
you will find out there are some people that even though the husband is a cheat, they still find a spot to forgive such a man. In their heart. I see men too. Their wives cheating. But they still find a place in their heart to forgive that woman. I, I, I Sometimes I, I looked at myself and I said, is this love for real? Is this the way love is for real? Like I was saying some time ago, that if my wife should cheat on me, that I'm going to forgive her? Me! I said it. But I went back to sit down and, 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 and I had a second thought about this stuff, I said. <laughs> Can I do this? But every day God is helping me. For me to become a better man in life. But there are some certain things that are very difficult to do. But God opened my eyes to see something. And he said to me, he said, you know what? You can never love without God. He said, because love is God and God is love. It will take you to have me on the inside of you. For you to know that you are in love. Hi. You know, for you to know that you are in love. You have to carry me with you. You have to know me. You have to believe in me. You have to reference me. You must become me for you to be able to love. Then I found out that, listen to me, love is not just being sexually attracted to somebody. Love is not just attracted, being attracted to somebody. You know what It's deeper than that. Some people may be sexually attracted to you right now and they will be all over you just doing you every angle, every side, every corner. And then one day you'll be so surprised that they are no longer aggressive towards you anymore. That you may be walking all around in the place and they just look at you like this. People believe that when sexual relationship is a law, that somebody banging you, banging you here, they'll say, oh my God, he's in love with me. No, you don't, you don't define love based on sexual relationship. <coughs> Sex is not, a, is not the definition of love. No. Sex is not the definition of love at all. We, make bad, we are making a big mistake if you are confusing sex with love. No, 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 no. The person you love, you will never run out of juice. The person you will still be sexually attracted to the person until you die. I cancel... A 70-year-old woman one time. 70 years old. And the husband is probably like around 80. He said, Pastor Shola. I said, yes. He said, me and my husband, we still have sex. I couldn't believe myself. I said, mommy, can you repeat that? He said, me and my husband, we still have sex. I said, for reasons. I said, the man didn't stop having sex with you. He said, no. He is still all over me. He is still all over me. A marriage of over 50 years. A marriage of over 50 years. The man is still all over that woman. She is not, it is not possible for him to have enough of her. That I will bang this woman until she enter the grave. Th that is love. Love will never make you run out of juice. You can't run out of power. You cannot run after that likeness and the love. You cannot run after that sexual connection. It will still be there. It will be there. The God was not telling me, he said, Pastor Shola, I said, yes, sir. More of me. <laughs> he said, the more of me you have, the more of love that will grow in you. The more you can forgive other people. He said, the more of me that you have, the more forgiveness you will be able to do. People offend you today, it won't matter to you. People offend you today, it won't matter to you. Because you have more of me. Then I began to look at this, okay, so we are having less of God right now. That is why our life is miserable. And I come to find out it is true. The Christianity of old is different from the one that we're doing right now. People do get born again for real in the olden days. 
People give their life to God for real. They do. They do. But for us today, we are Christians today because of what we can get. So many of us are Christians today because we are lonely people. We got no friends. The only time we have people to talk to is when we go to church. So you are not really born again. You are trying to block your sadness. You are looking for a place to socialize. The church is not a place to socialize. It's a place to mingle with people of God and to develop yourself and then to worship God. Many of us, because we want to do business, that's why you are in church, because the church people will buy your goods. It's not because you love God. It's not because you love God you want to have him on the inside of you. No, no, no. Many of you guys got talent to sing. You join the choir to display talents. Oh, when I release a record of the old church members, we buy it. Let them know I'm a good singer. Let them know that I'm a good composer. That is the reason you are in church. It's not because you are born again. It's not because you love God. That's not the reason. Some of us become pastors because we want to make money. It's a money-making business. It's not because you connect to God. You don't have God in you. That's why you don't love people. That's why you can't forgive people. That's why real love is no longer in existence. That's why real love is missing today. Everybody has got a kind of plan. A negative plan against that of God. We are no longer genuinely born again. We go to display skills. Oh, I'm a very good... I, I speak good English. Your good English is not for is not, doesn't mean God called you. You can speak all the grammar you like, doesn't mean God called you. But we enter the ministry because we are good in English. We enter the ministry because we are creative. We enter the ministry because we know how to cajole people. All right. The size of your ministry or the size of your church doesn't indicate that God called you. Come on. The size of your ministry is not an indication that God is involved. It doesn't mean that God is there. People can gather together under your leadership. It doesn't mean that it's a church. It might not be a church. It might just be gathering of people that have been cajoled by you. That have been captured by your tricks. That have eaten only communion. Do you know how many people have eaten only communion and they cannot leave a church? They have taken only communion in that church. They can never leave that church. They will continue to pay their tithe and offering in that church until they die. Is the effect of the holy communion. Is the effect of the holy communion. I'm telling you. That is why don't be in a haste. Don't be in a rush to be eating holy communion. What you will see in the holy communion will be, ah, we pass your own power out. I am telling you this. I'm telling you this. For real. So, that is why love is missing. Love is missing because people are not, no longer lover of God. They are not lover of God. They are lover of themselves. And my mentor told me yesterday, he said, Pastor Shola, I said, sir. He said, do you want to be bothered about what you see? I said, it's bothering me. I said, no. Don't get bothered about it. Those are the signs that Jesus Christ talked about. This is the time for you to now be composed and be focused and keep on looking at Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith and keep doing the right thing and don't do wrong. Kai. And, 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 and I stood up from right there and ever since then, I've not become normal yet. I'm still wondering. I'm still wondering. I'm still wondering. For real. I'm still wondering. That's a slap on the face of God. For a pastor to go and fake miracles. It's a slap on the face of God. No wonder the unbelievers are no longer turning believers. You know, they are not turning believers. Unbelievers on the street, they look at us, they say they are better off than us. <laughs> they walk with their shoulders up. And they are so proud to tell you that I don't have God. 
They are so proud to tell you I'm not a Christian. They are proud to tell you <laughs> that I don't go to church. That you guys that go to church, what do you bring from there? Are you not a disgrace to God? We fake miracles. We fake testimonies. All in the name of money. All because of money. All because of fame. Popularity. Power. We fake all of this stuff. And one thing that I always remember that people tell me is that one day will be one day monkey go go back and no go come back. One day go be one day. And it don't share it, come and share it. And it don't shake, come and share it. I told you, I told you, I'm telling you, one day monkey go go back and no go come back. I'm telling you. But the issue is just that the, the, the life of people that will be destroyed will be so many before that is going to happen. Before that is going to happen. But the Lord will help us. The Lord will keep us. We will not fall victim. So many people are falling victim of people that stole their underwears. Not because of money. They bring fake love forward. They have sex with the girl. They steal the underwear and then they run away. They put a gun in the head of these girls and ask them to wear the underwear. Formerly, they told me that the girls don't die. It's just recently that I found out that the girls are dying. They take their underwear, they go and use the underwear, and those girls will die. Pastors are involved. Pastors are stealing underwear from people. Asking people to actually come and submit their underwear so that they will get married. People didn't know before. They take their underwear off. They give it to pastor because pastor wants to pray for them so that they will find the right husband. Their underwear is needed for prayer. I don't know when God has done to be like that, that God is looking for pata. God is looking for pata to, to, to use to find a husband for a woman. I don't understand why. So they turn around and they steal all this stuff and they kill these people. I was told they killed one, they, they, they stole an American girl's pint too in a hotel in Nigeria. You know what I'm saying? So you, 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 you will see that life has been destroyed. Life has been destroyed. Life has been destroyed. I don't understand. You sleep with a boy, you are in for it. You don't know what he used in rubbing his mouth to sleep with you. Or you just find out that you become sick after you had sex with the person. Your husband cannot be trusted now. These days, every one of them wants to ride a, a Bentley or whatever they call that car. Every one of them wants to spend money. They want to. You know? It's difficult these days. You can't even trust nobody. You can't trust pastors. You can't trust imams. You can't trust the people in government. You cannot trust your teacher. You can't trust your wife. You cannot trust your husband. You can't. You can't. Every one of them, they have something they are calculating that you don't have any understanding about. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Oh, I wish I can get sponsors. I wish I can get sponsors that will sponsor me to be on a radio or TV station in Nigeria. I I'm telling you. I wish I can get sponsors. Who can sponsor me and just buy me here time on a radio station in Nigeria or a TV station in Nigeria? I'm telling you, I will be willing to send recordings to them or to do live broadcast on TVs in Nigeria. Or maybe you know a TV station that can give us free hear time or a radio station that can give us free hear time in Nigeria. Or maybe you are actually a radio station owner or you are a TV station owner that can give us slots 
and say, Pastor Tola, come here for free. I come and slap Rema into the head of Nigerians. I will be willing. I will be willing to do it. But it's not a pity we cannot get it. It's a pity we cannot get it. All we get is uh, all people that want to be sponsored are people that are doing go-go dance. If I'm doing go-go dance now, and they will have called me and said, Pastor Sola, come and have a show on my TV. It's, I know it's very possible, but nobody wants to do it. Nobody wants to do it for us. It's a lot. It's, 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 I don't understand. It's just, I don't understand it. You know? It's just difficult. Nobody wants to do it. Nobody wants. We, I want God to surprise us. Let God surprise us. Let's go and slap Rema into people's lives. I will be willing to give my own self into it and do it. But we don't have anybody to sponsor us. We don't have nobody to sponsor us. You know? So, we will continue to do the little we can do here. We continue to do the little we can do here. I, I, I went to Nigeria the last time. Come and see people listening. They listen. They listen. They listen to what I got to say. And now they are thinking about it. I don't want TV station in Houston. What do you me with TV station in Houston? I'm talking about TV station in Nigeria. Houston. What do you me? I went to TV station in Houston. Nobody's watching it. Nobody is watching the TV station in Houston. Which TV station in Houston? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so, so that's the issue. The, <laughs> that's the issue. We need, we need TV stations in Nigeria. <laughs> we got raise and helper. I know, Jari, my brother. <laughs> God is going to raise helper. To raise people that will actually be able to connect to it. That, that will be able to sponsor and give us the support. I, I spoke with Dinka Ayifele. He said, I, I'm supposed to pay $300 every month. $300 every month for hair time on Ayifele Radio and all that. You know? We, we, need, we, need, we need the support. We need that support. We need it, but it's just a pity. We don't have it. We don't have it. But we'll continue to do the little we can do. Um, can people change, Pastor Sola? Yes, people can change. People can change, my brother. Uh, you see, we we are products of nature and nurture. Uh, nature we change us, and nurture affect our lives. Um, where you live, your environment, people you talk with, people that are talking to you, the food you are eating. Uh, the atmosphere where you find yourself, the mentality of people around you will change your life. Will change your life. Okay? That's the way they are. Inshallah, inshallah, you need my number. Leave me an inbox message. I will give you my number. Leave me an inbox message. All the radio stations are owned and sponsored by all these fake pastors. And all. <laughs> so people can change. Uh, all you need is just to be in a different atmosphere. You change. Um, I I, di I didn't get born. I, they didn't born me this way. I lived my life among the white people in Oklahoma for many years, and I, and I was able to see a lot of different stuff. You know, I attend. I, I was able to attend their Thanksgiving parties. I've been able to attend their Christmas parties. You know, and uh, you know, you know, we sit down, we talk. I see their mentality is just different. It's just very different. Then I go back and read the Bible in a different way. And now I got it. I, 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 know, I, I began to look at it as, okay, wow, you got to be free. Uh, I attended the white church for over six years. I attended the, 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 the new church in Oklahoma. It's a white church. I attended that church for over six years. All right? So we, we go to church. We do 30 minutes Bible study. We do 35 minutes of preaching. Another whatever, music, whatever. And then we close the church. We go upstairs to eat sandwich. Mingo. We connect. The second service is going on downstairs. One hour service we're done. Offering and tithe is not part of the service. The two boxes are outside. When you are coming, they have already taught you to give. So you collect two envelopes, through the, I mean by the drive-thru, 
and then you put your money there, nobody will wind you to give. You just put your money and put it in the boxes outside, you come into church. That's it. And the church is actually very rich. People are giving. Nigerian setting, they bring offering to church. If you don't ask them, they take it back home. <laughs> they take it back home. You need to be in a different environment. When you find yourself in a different environment, different set of people, different understanding, different words every day, you will form your life around what you see. You form your life around what you see, what you listen to. You're going to form your life around it. You, you find out that when I started this broadcast, I don't know, probably like about a so few years ago, uh, so a few years ago, everybody will come and say, are you crazy? Are you crazy? Do you know now? Do you know how many people are actually doing the same thing I'm doing right now on social media? People don't talk about sex before. I started that stuff. Now everybody's talking about sex everywhere they go. <laughs> everywhere on social media, everybody's now talking about sex, talking about sex. How many married counselors do we have then? People don't come to one year and come and talk about marriage. I started this stuff. Started teaching about marriage and now everybody's teaching about marriage. I'm telling you. Everybody's doing it. I started this preaching from the car. Number one guy to do this stuff. Now everybody's doing the car thing. I started this thing. So you will never know. People will change. They will copy what you're saying. They will continue to do something different when they are among different people. See, that's the stuff. So, I know, I find something good with the white people, I find something good with the black people. Then I put it together. And I found out, that, okay, the white people have their own bad stuff they do. The black people have their own bad stuff they do. So, I, I decided, let me pick the good stuff from the white people. Let me pick the good stuff from the black people. Let's put it together. And let's borrow ourselves brain. Let's borrow ourselves brain. Let's stop being over spiritual. Okay? Let's balance physical and spiritual together. You balance physical and spiritual together. And that's going to make it for you. That will make it for you. That will work it out for you. You know what I'm saying? That's the stuff. Alright? So, uh, for, for, for people telling you to be over spiritual... You need to go and tell that person, say, I'm really sorry, I, I can't be. I just want to be normal. I want to be me. Just be yourself. Don't let nobody force you to do anything whatsoever. Just be yourself. Pray to your God the way you know how to pray to your God. And God will answer you. It's all about your heart. It's all about you connecting and having a relationship with God. So when you do that, you will find that you are worshipping God in spirit and in truth. The truth part of it is what is missing. People are actually over spiritual, but they are not worshipping God in truth. The truth part of it is missing. People must be able to connect the truth to the service of the worship of God. Worship of God. Be truthful to yourself and be truthful to God. Let God know you for who you are or for what you are. Okay? That's, it. That's the only thing. Just be truthful to yourself. I said to the, somebody the other day, I said, Pastor, can you please, you guys stop preaching lies? Tell the people the truth. Don't ever in this world come and tell people that Bible is against drinking. Bible is not against drinking. Oh, Christians can drink all. He said, yes, sir. I said, so why are you telling them lies? Okay, why are you telling them lies? They can drink. That's in the Bible. Don't come and be forming the word of God that is not correct. Bible advised the kings not to drink so that, you know, their mindset can be okay when they are judging issues. And then we, we talk about leaders in church too. But Paul said to Timothy, he said, you can drink a little wine for your, because of your stomach. Too much of everything is bad. If, if you drink too much of water, it's bad for you. If you eat too much, it's bad for you. So don't be telling people lies. Divorce is biblical. Did you read it in the Bible? It's there in the Bible. That divorce is biblical. Stop lying to the people. Let's tell the people the truth. 
you will, you will teach them the truth and then you let them understand what the Bible is saying about these whole things. Oh, we don't want them to commit sin. No, then, then you tell them the truth. It is the truth that can set them free. Not the lies. The truth will set them free. Not the lie. The lie will make them to become fake. They will have self-righteousness. Because what you're feeding them is fake. But when you teach them the truth, the truth will set them free because now they know the truth. Now they know the truth. Divorce is biblical. Teach it to them. Open the scripture and show them from the Bible. If we don't have any information about it, invite us. We will come and show them from the Bible why the Bible says it. It is biblical. It is biblical. Nigerians don't know. All of their life, they've been listening to pastors saying divorce is not by people. Go ahead, divorce. Go ahead, divorce. Go ahead, divorce. That's exactly what they've been hearing all their lives. All of their lives. And that's why many of them are dying in relationships that they're being killed in the relationship because their pastor is telling them, go ahead, divorce. Go ahead. Go ahead. Is it, we have to read the Bible and then understand the Bible and balance some of the Bible when we are trying to preach. Balance it. You balance it. You have to balance it up. Don't just say one thing that you feel that you've been hearing uh, your grandfather saying for the past 500 years. Don't just say that. You need to go to the Bible and go read it. And go read it. And I, and I want to advise every one of you too. Okay? Don't just listen to preachers. Don't just listen to preachers. Go home and read. Go home, try and read. Thank God for the internet. Whatever question you have from the Bible, go and Google it. And then read different, different articles on that same topic. You will read different articles on that topic. You will understand it well. Many people will attack it from different angles. And then you will understand. Then you will have understanding. Don't just depend on what your pastor is saying. Don't just depend on what your pastor is saying. By the time you finish preaching on Sunday, go home, sit down, flip your notes, Google some stuff, ask questions. And then you will see the answer. And you will not find yourself in bondage of religion. The problem we have in, in the world generally is religion. Religion is the problem. Religion is the problem. If we can all just become a Christian, it will be good for us. For us to be a Christian, it will be good for us. Not to just be a religious person. Not just to be a religious person. Let's just become Christians. It will be good for us. We'll enjoy every bit of our life. People will forgive other people. People will love other people. Husband will love their wife. The wife will love their husbands. The life will be made easy. You will not scam people anymore. You will not forward name people anymore. Okay? All, all of this killing will stop. All of this killing will stop. You know? All of the killing will, killing will stop. And, 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 and this life, this world will be a better place for our children. Be a better place for our children. We will not just be building a world or a, or a country or, 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 or this world that will actually mess the life of our children up. Religion is the problem of the world. But Christianity is not a religion. It is the way of life. Christianity is not a religion. It is a way of life. The way you live, the way you eat, the way you sleep, the way you talk, the way you forgive, the way you do all things, the way you drive on the street, the way you walk, the dressing. That's Christianity. You know, those people didn't come and announce themselves that we are Christians. People label them Christians. When they saw them, the way they are talking, the way they were breaking bread, the way they are loving people, the way they were teaching, they said, these ones are Christians. So how did you know? He said, can't you see their life? Can't you see the way they live their life? It's the way of life. It's the way of their life that proves them to be Christians. It's not the size of their Bible. 
It is not in the hearing that they are not wearing. It is not. It's the way of life. The sweetness of their heart. The transparency of what they say. The love of people. Love of people. The sincerity in what they teach and the way they say things. That's what Christianity is. Christianity is saying no. When you mean to say no? When you mean to say no? I preached a message one time. I said no is an anointed word. No is an anointed word. If you say, if somebody asks you, Pastor Tola, can you give me $10? If I say, I'm thinking about it. The person will call me the next day. I say, are, 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 are you ready? And I say, well, I'm still thinking about it. The person will call me another day. But if the person asks me, do you have $10 to give me? And I say, no. That's the end of the wahala. The person will call me tomorrow, will call me next tomorrow. I've already been, been able to make him to understand I don't have any money to give him or to give her. No, it's an anointed one. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take you away from all of this wahala. But when you say, I'm thinking, when you say, I'm thinking, I'm thinking means you have the money that you are thinking maybe you should give me or not, then I'm going to call you again tomorrow. So Christianity is in you saying, no, I can't give you. Christianity is in you saying, no, I can't give you. I don't have it. I have it, but I can't give you. You see this $10? It's for something different. I can't give you. That's Christianity. Being truthful. You live your life truthfully. Where are you coming from? Dubai. Where are you coming from? Liberty Road. Where are you coming from? Oyelegba. It's not uh, somewhere. I'm just coming from somewhere. I don't even know where I started from this place. No, 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 no. Be truthful. Be straightforward. You don't owe anybody any apology for your life. You don't owe anybody any explanation for how you live your life. All right? But make sure that your life is connected to that of God and that of Jesus for people to be able to identify and say, this one is a Christian. And this one is a Christian. You know, that, that's, that's all. In Sunday service is not a Sunday. Sunday morning is not a Sunday morning for us to come and be displaying skill. It is, it's, not, it's not a time to display skill. Sunday service is a worship service where you worship God. For real. We only worship God on Sunday mornings. We should worship God. Just lift our holy hands and worship Him. And worship Him. And worship Him. And then we read the scriptures. And, and, and then we hear the word of God. And we hear the word of God and then we go home. Okay? That's what, that's what it is. Is it the time, the time that you preach Christ is when you're outside, through your character, you know, you don't have to, you, you see, you don't have to talk to preach Jesus. You don't have to. But if you have to, you need to use your word. If you don't have to, just go ahead and just preach the gospel without talking. Is your life preaching? Is your attitude preaching? Is, is the habit in you, the habit you have, are they preaching? It's your way of life preaching. You don't have to use your word to preach Christ. Let people see him in you. It's a way of life. It's the way you should live. It's not the way, it's not what you say. So many people say something that they don't do. They preach things that they don't do themselves. It's do as I say, don't do as I do. But let what you do be what is preaching. But if you have to use your word, you use your word. But I don't think you do. You just need to do it with your life. Your character, your attitude, your belief. Okay? That, that's what should be preaching. That's what people should be saying. People stopped reading the Bible a long time ago. They read us. They read us. They get answers to their questions through our own lives. Our life is an example to them. That's why the Bible says you are the light of the world. The way you act is a light to other people. The way you talk is a light to other people. They copy your light. 
you do the way you're doing. The light came upon the disciples because they followed the light of Jesus. So they were able to shine the light of Christ to other people. When they saw them, they said, these ones must be Christians. Because they could see the light of Christ shining on the inside of them. And you are supposed to shine the same light, reflect the same light. But what kind of light do you have? What are people seeing about you? Is your light preaching? Or is your light sending people to hell? That's it. Do you have light? Or some of you don't even have light. And you are just in darkness like every other person. Like every other person. You know what I'm saying? To be the light is the best thing in life. It's not just true talking. It's true. It's true. It's true. Your life that you live. It's true your life that you live. Live that life. Make it a righteous life. You can't make it a righteous life by yourself. But have Christ on the inside of you. So that it will become your light. And then you can shine his light to the world. That when people see you, they know that you have been with Christ. It's not about quoting scriptures. No. It's not about praying and shouting. No. It's not about the demo demo of your life. It's not about it. It is about a life in God. Preaching to others even without talking. That's the life. That's the life. That's that life. Take that home today. I believe you have been blessed. If you have been blessed, can I just see you? Just step on that glass. Step on that glass. If you have been blessed, show me some love. I want to see love popping out. If truly you are blessed, show me some love right there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't want to bore you guys. It's 9 for the, for the 9 already. I believe a lot of you guys are at work right now. So don't let me bore you. Thank you. Jesus on that sunshine on my If you live in Baltimore, you live in Washington, Maryland area. I am coming to Maryland this month. Uh, I mean, the month of March. Got three programs there already. One pro I mean, there are two programs the same day, afternoon and evening. We are going to be talking about relationship, marriage, sex in the Christian home, money, and all of that. So feel free to meet me if you are in Maryland, by the grace of God. In April, April 27th, I'm going to be in Tennessee. Tennessee, by the grace of God, we are going to be doing the relationship school in Tennessee. Be getting ready. If you want to register right now, go ahead and do your registration. Right now, go to my page. You will see the link there. Register yourself, your husband, your wife, your family. Let's get together by the grace of God. Come and show me some love, man. Yeah. Call on Christ and the answer. He gives me the chances. Now I have only stances. Now they watch it be dancing. Call on Christ and the answers. Oh, even when I fall, he gives me chances. Embassy hey, KG, I was in I was in Texas, I just left Texas, I was in Dallas. Call on Christ and the answers. Even when I fall, he gives me chances. Now I have heavenly stances. Yeah. Tell them what you be dancing. I call on Christ and the answers. Yeah. Thank you guys. And if you and if there's anyone there you need counseling, you need coaching sessions, it's not free. Give me a call, leave me an inbox message. We will see to whatever it is that is happening by the grace of the Lord. That's what I do. I'm a professional counselor, a professional coach, certified. Okay? And uh Feel free to call me and then we can sit down together. I can travel to wherever you are to meet you and your husband. We can do a video call. We can do a phone call. We can cancel you and coach you and take you to the next level. 
and that's what I've been doing all my life. And I want to let you know that my ministry has blessed a lot of people. So in case you need counseling, you need coaching, feel free to leave me an inbox message or give me a call. Give me a call. 405-550-5135. I'm going to be coming to New Jersey by the grace of God. Uh, in the month of May, I think it's May 4th. May 4th, we are coming to New Jersey by the grace of God. They advised us. They said New Jersey people are very nice people. I said, okay, we are going to give them the whole day. New Jersey people, the whole day for you guys. All right, thank you guys. See you guys later. Bye. I'm coming to Maryland on the 27th of the month of March. Nero O'D is my manager in, 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 in Texas generally. That's my manager. Nero O'D is my manager there. We are going to work something out for you guys who are in Houston again. And we're going to come in this time. But when I come to Houston this time, I'm not talking about any other things but sex. Sex is the problem I want to use it. What can say? Bass bulls, bass bulls everywhere. What is that? Let's come and teach you guys sex. The power in sex. And then the destruction that can happen when you actually engage in sexual relationship. Stolen water is sweet. How you can avoid it? People in Houston. All you know is bass bulls, bass bulls. I'm coming to Houston. We are coming to talk about <laughs> For real. <laughs> so we are coming, we are coming to Houston. You know what I'm so we are coming to Houston. We are gonna be bringing the gospel according to sex. The gospel according to sex. That's what we are bringing. Of course, you'll be blessed. When are you coming to Atlanta? We don't have anybody planning anything for us in Atlanta. If there is anyone who is willing to plan something for us in Atlanta, feel free to connect with me and then we we'll work it out. Chapter 1, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we're going to be talking about sex when we come to Texas again. Nothing, we're not going to talk about anything. I'm going to open it up for straight two hours. Straight two hours talking about sexual relationship. We're going to start from what is sex to how you can enjoy sex. How you can actually activate your God-given power to be able to satisfy your wife. Okay? And who is a receiver and who is the giver? How can you receive and motivate the giver? The, the receiver must motivate the giver. The giver must satisfy the receiver. All of those stuff we're going to be talking about. I'm not opening it up to you yet, okay? A to Z of love making. Start from the body time. You with Tiku when she's making breakfast. You are sending Aroko. And the Aroko is entering the place. And when you get back home, let me tell you something. The kids are going to be sleeping by six. And the whole football field has been taken care of. Music is playing. Your food is on the dining table. Eat and have energy. Let's go straight to the shower. From the shower to the bedroom. Shinobole, jaku, jaku. By the time you finish, your wife will be shouting hallelujah. And you will be praising God. <laughs> Bad driving. Don't drive me. When I come straight to Houston, I mean, to Texas this coming time, Nero and is putting something together. We're going to come in and we talk about sex all through. So if you are the one that you cannot stand it, you cannot stand it. When we are talking about me, we are going to talk about it. 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 Don't come. Don't come. If you know, we are going to talk about it. We are going to talk about it. Because I will open it up. For those in Nigeria, what is the bank account that I want to pay in? <laughs> Don't worry. So these are what we're going to be bringing in. And your wife, your husband will be able to satisfy you again. Uh, we're going to give them the trick. 
the trick to satisfy. All right, we're gonna work on it. All right, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you. Bye.